Now in these days of solo gigs and backing tracks and things, stuff like GarageBand on iOS becomes very, very useful. But what if you've recorded something in the studio like I have on Logic Pro X here and I wanted to go out with this as a backing track, but I still wanted some capabilities over mixing? Well, it's easy enough to send a GarageBand file from iOS up to uh, Logic Pro X on a, an iMac or whatever because you simply just share the project and it just magically opens up with all the same sounds on and the tempo and everything in place on Logic. How lovely. Of course, that cannot be done the other way around because Logic is much, much more capable uh, than GarageBand. It has much, much more on it. So you can't expect GarageBand to sort of compete or keep up. However, we could send some tracks from here. We could export some tracks onto GarageBand so that I could go out with this on a gig and be able to sing and play the guitar for, for example. Now, this is a recording uh, that I made on one of my lockdown tunes during the coronavirus pandemic. So this is uh, I Can't Go For That by Horn & Oates. So if I just go a little bit further into the tune, uh, here's where the verse starts. <laughs> So, for example, there's some backing vocals. So, I'd want to keep the backing vocals for my live gig, but I wouldn't want to keep the lead vocals, and I wouldn't probably wouldn't want to have the guitar either. Um, let's say I just want bass, drums, keys, and backing vocals. So, what I'm going to do is just to mute everything that hasn't been that I that I want to. Uh, take off the recording. Now, the drums, helpfully, were sent to me by the drummer as a mix. And they sound good, so don't need to bother with that. But what I want to be able to do is, out on a gig, maybe I want to have a little bit of control over the mix or to put effects on various things like a bit of reverb on those backing vocals, for example. So I need to export these tracks. So actually, I'm going to rename that one. Um, just going to rename it Drums, because I'm going to export all of these into a folder. Now, I'm not going to export all the tracks. I'm just going to export the ones that I want to the send. So once again, anything that has a key command, one track as audio file, command E. I'm going to make sure I'm going to click off that and then use the key command. Key commands are much, much more useful, says flittering around with a mouse. So I'm going to export that track uh, and I get to this page where I'm able to change the audio format or indeed what happens to that file. I want the um, to extend the file length to the project end. Now, just before I do that, I've got to check how long the project is. Yeah, it's a little bit longer than the actual tune, but I'm just going to drag it back so that it is, yeah, just after the end of the tune. Don't want to export lots of silence and waste lots of memory. So I'm going to do that again, export the drums, and this time I'm going to put it on the desktop, new folder, go for that uh, backing files. Don't know. OK, so keep it as 24-bit. The um, GarageBand on iOS will handle that. And there is my drum part going down nice and quickly. So this is fairly easy to do. Now I'm going to do the roads and can do that exactly the same way. Now it does default to bar one, beat one. So if you don't need to come in at the beginning, that's fine. If you do, you're going to have to work out some sort of counting, but you could do that on GarageBand afterwards. Uh, we've got a tempo of 110 here. Must keep that in mind as well, because the tempo information doesn't go across. So uh, I'm just going to uh, put the uh, roads on that now. And then I'm going to do the bass. Now, the backing vocals, I could do... Actually, I could treat these slightly differently. I don't want to export every single backing vocal. Maybe I'd want to do a mix. So I'll do those last. So this is the keyboard part going down at the moment. And uh, that's just exporting to the end. Um, and then I'm going to do my bass guitar part and then the vocals. So the bass guitar is this one here. It was actually output to me, sent to me as a stereo track, but I've corrected for that on here. Uh, so I've made it a mono track. So I'll just, uh, and there's, a bit of a, yeah, there's a guitar solo at the end. I don't want that either. I'm just going to have the, um, uh, the bass part. So export that. 
could have used Command E. So, um, new folder. No, I just want to put it in there. Roads, drums, and bass. Now, with the backing vocals on here, I'm actually going to do a bounce of those. Um, so, if I solo these three out, so that silences all the other tracks. Hi. There we go. There's a little silent. There's a little... Um, I think I came in in the wrong place there, so I'm just going to make sure I get rid of that so it doesn't come out on the recording. And now I'm going to... I'm actually going to um, bounce this project... I'm going to go from bar one to bar 103, which is the end of the project. And I'm going to call it, let's keep it 24 bit. I'm going to call it backing vocals. And I'm going to make sure that it goes in my backing files. There we go. So uh, BV mix. I'm going to bounce that. Now that bounces it as a stereo file. Anything else that's stereo on there, will be bounced as a stereo file. Now for GarageBand that's, that could have implications because you do have 32 tracks available but if it's a stereo track it's going to take two tracks. But for this purpose it's going to be fine. It's like six or seven tracks. That's more than enough for a backing track to go out live with. But having that capability over the mix is really going to help you. Now I'm just going to uh, finish bouncing that off. Um, that should be finished just in a few moments. And then when that's done, I can airdrop everything to my iPad. So just go to Finder, um, and I go to uh, Desktop, uh, go for that, Backing Files. And there are my files. Bass 1, BV Mix, Drums 1, Rhodes 1. What could be clearer than that? They are all stereo files. You can see from the size, they're all roughly 59 megabytes, which is a three-minute song which is kind of what this is. So I'm going to select all of these files and I'm going to send them via AirDrop to my iPad. There we go. Sending. It's all nice and quick nowadays. Much better than a hard drive and going to another computer and finding out what's going on. Okay, so I'm on my iPad now. Now on the screen on my iPad, you can see open with files, model D, final touch, all of the things that I've got on here that you might open these tracks with. I'm just gonna put them into files because it's nice and safe. On my iPad, GarageBand, let's just add them there. There they are. Rhodes one, bass one, drums. I could have named them, I can't go for that instruments because obviously you can end up with a load of files on your system that you don't want. Okay so I've got them there now. I'm going to GarageBand and I'm going to create a new song. Now in order to import I'm just going to create an audio recorder track so that you end up with a working space that you can import everything into. So uh, a brick wall symbol at the top left to bring the page back. I'm going to duplicate this track four times. Was it five? Yes, four things. And then I'm going to, at the top with the loops, you can see that there is a number four, which means that there are four new tracks, which is essentially the four I've just exported. Move audio files. There we go. Click move files. And then what we end up with is the four uh, things that we've got. So we've got base one. Now, if you drag files into GarageBand from the Files app, be careful that you don't accidentally delete it because actually if you drag to the left it reveals a delete uh, button which you don't want. So click on the icon on the far left and then that will drag in like that. Uh, same thing with the drums. I'm going to go to the next track uh, and find Drums 1. And then on the next track, this is important because you, if you don't get your file hierarchy right, right, you might, for example, drag the Fender Roads in from Street Life over something else, over I can't go for that, and then you get a nasty surprise at your gig. So um, I'll just drag the backing vocals in, bvmix.wav, and then all of these things are now on your iPad. Great. Now, when you export an audio file, if I just go back into export here, uh, let's say I've got um, my, um, let's just unsolo that. Uh, so yeah, my roads, for example, if I go to export, I do have to check 
If I don't want those effect plugins, I have to bypass them because that's the only trouble now. The effects are now rendered onto iPad, but it's okay. I quite like the tune to sound like it sounded on the computer. So you can elect to have that switched off. As you can see, there are a few bars of silence at the beginning. But that's no matter, because also when you've got the thing on a music stand, you can kind of see where it's going to come in. Now the keyboard's quite quiet on GarageBand. Now there is a, a get out of jail free thing with this. If you go into the effects and the plugins and EQ, if we go into the visual EQ, you do have a gain slider on the right hand side here, which can lift things up by 30 dB, which is huge. But if I just try 10 dB um, and then play this back with the, with the bass and the drums, the keyboards are now, well, all, almost too loud. Now, if I just check the backing vocals, uh, see what's happening here. There we go, I can see them on the thing there. We might need to put a bit of reverb on these or spread them slightly. I, I... And there is your method of getting stuff off Logic for your backing tracks for your gig. It could go on a phone you know, and you'd have the same capability. So a phone and a lead and your own bespoke backing tracks from recordings you have made from Logic to GarageBand iOS.